Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be covering the build of my long range FPV ground station which is based on a tripod mounted 1.3 GHz pepper box. It also has a 5.8 GHz relay so we can view the video feed wirelessly on our goggles. Uh, this video is designed for people that are new or just starting out in the hobby so I'm going to touch upon briefly the basic theory behind some of the components I've used. If you want to skip any parts of this video I'm going to put the contents into the video description with links so you can skip to any part you want to. To start with, I'm just going to give a quick overview of what a ground station is for anyone that's new to the hobby. Next we're going to move on to basic antenna theory. This is omni versus high gain directional antennas as we're using both on this ground station. Next we'll look at a diversity controller. Then we're going to move on to a quick overview of the ground station, all of the parts used and the cost and where you can buy them. And then the final part will be the build including the wiring diagrams. What is a ground station and why do we use one? Uh, simply put, a ground station is a collection of FPV components that is not on your person. Uh, most commonly, they're installed into cases like this one I used to own, or onto tripods, like the one I'm going to walk through in this video. So why do we use them? Well, the reason for this is normally because one or more of the components that you want to use are larger than you can comfortably fit into or on your FPV goggles. Normally these larger components would be antennas or automatic antenna trackers. If you're using 5.8 GHz for your video feed, in most cases you won't need a ground station as your goggles can contain everything you need, depending on the model. The main reason people are using ground stations is because they're using 1.3 GHz for their video feed, and antennas in this frequency are a lot larger than the commonly used 5.8 GHz. Here is a comparison of two omnidirectional antennas, one is in 1.3 GHz and the other in 5.8. But it's when you start comparing the size of these high gain antennas that it really starts to make a difference. Here are two VAS pepper boxes, one in 1.3 GHz and one in 5.8 GHz. Without going into too much detail, 1.3 GHz is normally used for long range FPV as it has better penetration of objects, uh, it's more forgiving flying at low altitude and generally just makes flying long range a bit easier and more reliable. Next I'm going to cover some very basic antenna theory, just so you have an understanding of omnidirectional antennas and high gain antennas, because both of those are used on this ground station. An omnidirectional antenna is able to receive a signal from any direction around you. So from a bird's eye view, this is what the coverage might look like, with the black dot in the middle being the location of the antenna. They don't have the longest of range, as they are looking in all directions, but on one of these antennas on 1.3 GHz I have comfortably been out to 3 or 4 kilometers, and it's definitely possible to go a bit further than that. So if I'm facing this way, as per the arrow, I can fly in front, behind and all around myself no problem. High gain antennas such as the pepper box are classed as long range antennas. You can fly 30 kilometers plus no problem with the right conditions and configuration. However, High gain antennas are directional, which means they have a field of view out in front of them. The pepper box specifically has a very wide beam width of around 165 degrees horizontally, which is roughly illustrated by the blue line in this diagram. It basically means as long as you fly in front of the antenna, you should be good. With the pepper box, I can now fly way beyond the limits of the Omni antenna, which I would have lost signal with around here but the pepper box allows me to fly many more kilometers into the distance. The reason the pepper box is able to give such long range with such a wide beam width at the same time is because it sacrifices in the vertical beam width. This is how it would look from a side on view. What this means is that you have to increase your altitude gradually as your distance from home increases. It also means that you wouldn't be able to fly a high altitude at closer range like you would be able to do with the Omni antenna. So now you have a decision to make. You've got your 1.3 GHz receiver, but do you connect the Omni antenna, allowing you to fly in all directions around yourself, but not very long range? Or do you plug in your pepper box, allowing you to fly long range, but only in one direction and not behind yourself? Wouldn't it be great if we could just use both antennas in the same flight? This brings us nicely onto the next section, which is about diversity controllers. A diversity controller is a device that allows us to connect two receivers, and therefore use two different antennas. What this device then does is it analyzes the signal from each of the receivers and the output that it provides to you on your screen or into your goggles is the receiver that has the strongest signal strength at that moment in time. 
So what you'd expect in this situation is that the diversity controller would be showing you the video from the receiver that has the omni directional antenna attached. And in this situation, you would expect that it would be showing you the video from the receiver that is attached to the pepper box. This all happens automatically while you're flying. So next we're going to look at a parts list to build this ground station. We're also going to look at how much it's going to cost and also where to get these items from. I'll post links to all of these items in the video description below. The main item you're going to need that forms the base of this ground station is the 1.3 GHz pepper box. You can pick one of these up from ReadyMade RC for $115. The pepper box comes with a screw thread pre-installed for mounting of a tripod. It's up to you which tripod you purchase, um, but I'd recommend one that can take the weight of all of this gear that's going to be on the pepper box. And also it's useful if you have one where the legs can spread wide just in case it's a windy day. The one I went for is a KNF Concept tripod, which can be purchased on Amazon for $70. Next part you'll need is an omnidirectional antenna. I got the Mad Mushroom from ReadyMade RC for $21.50. You need to ensure that the polarisation of all of your antennas are matching. This one seen here is right hand circular polarised, so you need to make sure that the one on your aircraft, the Omni antenna on your ground station and the pepper box on your ground station are all matching in polarisation. Next you're going to need two video receivers in 1.3GHz. The ones I have are these ones from ReadyMade RC and they're $55 each. The next item on my ground station is a DVR. Basically this is just recording the live downlink from the aircraft and the reason this is really useful is because if you do have any trouble at any point uh, you'll be able to go back and watch the footage and see your last known GPS coordinates. You can get the DVR I have from getfpv.com for $105. It might be that you already have a DVR built into your goggles in which case you wouldn't need to purchase one of these. The next item you need is the diversity controller which is something we discussed earlier in this video. You can purchase one of these from Hobby Wireless for $190. The next item you'll need is a power distribution board. Basically this is going to be used to supply power to every single item that is on the ground station and you, any simple board will do. I just had this one lying around, it was unused from a quad build I did um, so if you've got one lying around, use that. If you want to use the same one as me, you can get this one from Banggood for just $2. I also added this optional voltage meter here onto the PDB. All this does is show the current voltage of your ground station battery. You can purchase one on Banggood for just $4 if you wish. The final item on the list is a 5.8 GHz video transmitter. I highly recommend you choose a very low output for this. 25 milliwatts is plenty for this application. If you're in the same field as your ground station, you're going to receive the picture perfectly clear and you don't want to swamp anyone else around you that's flying on 5.8. The one I purchased is this Ichin TX801 from Banggood for just $20. Now that we've been through all the parts, here is a summary and a grand total which is $637.50. If you wanted to try and build one of these on a slightly lower budget, you can actually really reduce the cost if you don't want to use diversity. If you just go ahead and use a pepper box without the omnidirectional antenna, this will actually bring the total cost down to $371. If you want to bring it down even more and you don't include a DVR, this can bring the cost of the ground station down to $266. Remember this list is also recorded in the video description below and it contains links to every item. This brings us on to the final part of the video which is the build of the ground station including the wiring. Firstly, we're going to look at this very simple wiring diagram of the ground station. We're going to do this in two parts. The first one is how we connect the components on the ground station, and then the second part is going to be how we provide power to each of them. The simple part to start with is that we have two receivers and we have two antennas. So we're going to connect those two antennas to those receivers. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to use the supplied cables to connect the video receivers to the video inputs on the back of the diversity daemon. It actually has three inputs on the back, we're only going to use two of them on this ground station. Now that we've connected the two receivers to the diversity daemon, it's receiving the video signal. Now what we need to do is we need to connect the two outputs that it has to the two devices. So using the supplied cables with the diversity daemon, you can connect AV1 or AV2 to the DVR 
and then the other one we need to connect to the video transmitter. Now the video signal is making its way all the way from the antenna through the diversity daemon to the video transmitter and then wirelessly transmitted to our goggles. The diagram now shows how we're going to power the four items that need power on this ground station. This is the two video receivers, the diversity daemon and the video transmitter. The DVR actually has a built-in battery so we don't need to provide this with power. Each of these devices come with their own power cables. In most cases you will need to cut them and then solder them onto the power distribution board. It doesn't matter where on the power distribution board as long as you wire the red to the plus and the black to the negative. All of these items run off 12 volt so I'll simply be powering this ground station with a 3S LiPo. So this is actually all of the wiring done. It really is as simple as that. I'd say the hardest part about putting this together is really just cutting the cables and having to solder them. Next we're going to take a look at the ground station and see how we physically put all of this together. To start with I'm going to go through the first wiring diagram which is connecting all of the components on the ground station. Here on the back of the diversity daemon is where you'll find the video input channels. This is where we're going to connect both of our receivers. The first receiver is connected via the video output to RX1 and the diversity daemon. As with most of the wiring on my ground station, what I've done is I've used the supplied cables, um, but I've cut them to exactly the right length that I wanted them and resoldered them. It's up to you if you want to adopt the same approach as me here. I only did this to keep the wiring nice and tidy on the ground station. This first receiver is connected to the pepper box antenna. Over here we have the second receiver, which has the omnidirectional antenna mounted to it. What I've done is I have mounted this receiver as close to the top of the pepper box as possible um, just so that the Omni antenna gets good clearance above the pepper box. In terms of mounting all of the components onto the back of this pepper box, I've not done anything fancy, I've just used hot glue. The only exception to this is for the DVR. For this I've used Velcro to mount it and that's just because I like to be able to remove it. Uh, the reason I remove it is for when I'm charging it or also if you're looking for a lost model you might need to carry it around a field. The second receiver is also connected through the video output into the second RX input on the back of the diversity daemon. On the other side of the diversity daemon you will find the two video outputs, AV1 and AV2. Here I have AV2 running across to the DVR. A few dabs of hot glue to keep that in place. AV1 I have connected to the signal or the video yellow cable on the video transmitter. This 5.8 GHz relay is mounted close to the bottom of the pepper box. You can fold the antenna out here like this just to give it some clearance. I just wanted to point out that AV1 and AV2, they both provide exactly the same output. The only reason there are two ports there is so you can provide the output to multiple devices. Now that all of the components are connected together, we need to provide power to them. Using the supplied cable, connect the 12 volt power source on the receiver to the plus and minus pads on the power distribution board. It doesn't matter which of the plus and minus pads you solder onto for each of the devices here, just do whatever makes sense in terms of the layout of your components. Something else I've done here once I've finished all my soldering was I insulated each of the connections with a bit of hot glue. This is just in case of something like rain or if you touch the PDB with a metal item which might bridge the connections. Now do the same for the second video transmitter, connecting the 12 volt to the plus and minus on the power distribution board. This nice short cable here is the one that's providing power to the diversity daemon. This one again is soldered to the plus and minus on the PDB. Make sure this is plugged into the power input on the front of the diversity daemon on the same side as the video outputs. Next you can solder on the power cables for the VTX. If you're using a different video transmitter to the one that I recommended earlier, make sure that it accepts 12 volt because we're going to be powering this ground station with a 3S LiPo as that's what the other components accept. On the bottom pads of the PDB you're going to want to solder on a cable with a connector that suits your batteries. In my case I use an XT60 so that's what I've soldered on here. Connecting your battery here is what's going to supply the power to all of the devices on your ground station. If you have any other devices that you might want to power in the field from this ground station you can just solder on some other random connectors. This one here that I've added is to power my Fat Shark goggles just in case the battery dies. The voltage meter is hot glued in place on the PDB and the cables fed through this hole here are then soldered to the pads on the back of this board. To mount the PDB to the pepper box I've used the nylon screws for flight controllers 
and just hot glued them to the back of the pepper box. This way it's still removable if I need to take it off for any reason. This brings us to the end of my ground station build video. You should now have all the knowledge to be able to put this together and also the understanding as to why we're using all of the components used. Thanks for watching and please post any questions in the comments below the video.